Oh, here's a good one. If we're asked to graph negative two secant pi over four x plus two pi, the first thing we're gonna graph actually is negative two cosine of pi over four x plus two pi. Now, remember, we wanna factor out whatever's in front of this x, or I'll say factor out the b so that inside the parentheses, we have a coefficient of x equal to one. That's what's guiding our math here. So I'll factor out a pi over four and I'm left with x plus, well, if I factor, I don't have a four to pull out, right? So if I multiply this by, let me go back one step. If I multiply this by four over four, I'm gonna have pi over four x plus four over four times pi. Uh, you know what? We had two pi, right? And I want a pi over four, so, if I, if I have that two pi and I have to divide it by four, I also have to introduce a four in the numerator to give us y equals negative two cosine of pi over four x plus eight pi over four. Now, eight pi over four is the same as two pi, which allows us now to write this as negative two cosine of pi over four x plus if I pull out a one pi over four, I'm left with eight on the inside there. So I can already tell you, based on this, that our amplitude is two, but because we have a negative there, we've reflected it across the x-axis. So instead of max or min zero max, it's gonna go min zero max zero min. I recognize that b is pi over four. So period is two pi over b. If I keep change flip, I get two pi times four over pi, cancel, cancel, which gives us a period of eight. Eight what? Don't be afraid of that. That's eight radians. And look how nice and easy this is. X plus eight is gonna shift us to the left eight. That's our c. And plus zero, we're up and down zero. So we can start this at pi over four times x plus eight equals zero. Mo uh, di um, divide both sides by pi over four or multiply by the reciprocal four over pi gives us x plus eight equals zero. So x equals negative eight. By the way, our period is eight. If I'm starting at negative eight and I have to go forward eight radians, where should I stop? You guessed it, zero. So we can do our little math to confirm that. Our math to stop would be pi over four times x plus eight equals, where does the parent function stop? At two pi. So if I multiply both sides by four over pi, the reciprocal, I get, those that will cancel four over pi will cancel on both sides and I'll get x plus eight is equal to eight. Subtract eight from both sides, x equals zero. So just as I, as I thought, I'm gonna start at negative eight and end at zero. Notice how I'm always thinking though, I'm anticipating what the math should be. So when it turns out that way, I feel confident that I've done it right. So now we're ready to graph our cosine curve. All right, first thing we'll do is we'll draw an x-axis and a y-axis. Notice I and moved it all the way over there because I know I'm gonna start this at negative eight. So if I have negative eight over here and zero here, those are my stop and start spots. And I know that my graph is going to go, as we said, min zero, max zero, min. So I'm gonna be down here at negative two and up here at two. So if I wanna draw my guidelines in, it's a little easier because I don't have a vertical shift, right? So my guidelines are in and I'll do min zero, max zero, min. Halfway through we have negative four, that will be my max. So at negative six, we'll have our zero points. So there is our 
one, one full cycle of our curve, which is a cosine curve, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to continue this on just a little bit more. It'll make our life that much easier. Notice, if this is negative 2 here and negative 6 here, then this will be 2 here. So why do I mention that? Because one of the things I want to do right away is make my zeros, if I'm taking the reciprocal of 0, it's going to be, you guessed it, a vertical asymptote. I have a vertical asymptote here. If I draw it, I label it x equals negative 6 radians. Here is our second asymptote at x equals negative 2. And then, of course, way over here, we have x equals 2. So I'd like you to have at least three vertical asymptotes there. Our points here, well, this is a min point. It's at 0, would say 0, negative 2. Here is 0, comma, negative 2 for this point here. And our maximum point here is negative 4, comma, 2. So our graph, remember, our last thing is mins becomes maxes and maxes becomes mins. Here is our min point and our min becomes a max. And there it is at 0, negative 2. And at negative 4, 2, we've got a max point. It becomes a minimum. And then I get half of this here at negative 8, negative 2. I get half of that. I could keep on going with this. Remember, the green curve is our actual secant curve. Notice <clears throat> the domain for this is uh, all real numbers except x cannot equal negative 6 plus 4n, where n is an integer. What? what? Well, if I state this one, if I say all real numbers except x cannot equal this particular asymptote plus 4. Well, if I add 4, I get this. Well, what was n then? n was 1. What if n was 2? <whistles> then I add 4 and add 4 again, and I'm up to, all the way up to 2, right? 6 plus 4 plus 4 more is x equals 2. Well, what are the integers? The integers, this z with the double bar, remember, are negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. They are known as the counting numbers, 1, 2, 3. They're opposites, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and 0. So that's one way to do it. Little tricky here. Well, that was tricky. How about the range? Negative infinity all the way up to negative 2. Negative infinity to negative 2. Include the negative 2, right? Because we can have a negative 2. Union, we start up here at 2 and go to infinity. So we'll have 2 to infinity. So that's a little bit tricky, isn't it? The domain and range there. You've got to look at your picture and ask yourself, what could x equal? And then what could y equal? I like to scan from left to right to do my domain and from bottom to top to do my range.